All right, guys, we are uh, just another edition of our podcast. I have a person I don't know that well, but with little bit I got to spend with you this weekend, I really like you. I enjoyed our time together. So because of all those things, you get to come now. <laughs> oh, awesome. Man. Well, no, I'm happy to be here. And uh, and likewise, and I had probably no less than a dozen people, you know, tell me about you and how you are as a person and how uh, you're really changing the industry. Oh, thanks, man. So. Yeah, we're trying to do it differently, right? Um, yeah. That's kind of our goal. And uh, yeah, don't, not do it the normal way. So you, and you fit that. A bit. So, yeah, sometimes on purpose, sometimes not. Well, we just want to have a really good time. At, at, you know, obviously, we're all really competitive and we want to win, right? Period. But we want to have a really good time while we're doing that so that. If it, the outcome's not the way that we want, we still had a great time with our homies when we did it. Yeah. So I think if we keep that theme, it's it's really cool. And and you kind of are on that theme of, of doing more with less. Like, you know, um, I love your car, but after just <laughs> looking at it, I felt like I needed a Tetris shop. But uh, you know, <laughs> you're not wrong. <laughs> it uh, you know, it but it's a tool, right? It gets the job done. Yeah. It's, it's obviously you've been really successful with it and. We'll get to that in a little bit, but um, to take it back, what what in the world got you into this anyway? What what kind of what's that journey look like? Well, I guess to start out is uh, when we were kids, the family used to go, or well, actually, my dad grew up in Houston, Houston Raceway Park. I guess he he would worked at the racetrack, you know, when he was a kid, and so every year we moved from Houston to Austin. And uh, every year, the whole family would meet up. Uh, you know, our grandparents on my dad's side, and pretty much everyone would meet up at the racetrack. They had was a spot on the uh, the big end, like where they'd park all the campers for the NHRA yeah. Spring Nationals. And so, pretty much early on, I had that uh, experience. You know, watching Top Fuel. Uh, you know, once a year, and that kind of started everything. And and that just kind of led into we never did any actual racing in our yeah, family. Just we, ju- we just kind of went to hang out and then um, really a long journey there. But and then I just wanted to modify stuff, anything that I had skateboard and used to make fun of me. If, if that skateboard could do a burnout, you'd be doing it because yeah. I'd be pushing the limits, of everything, wrecking stuff, go karts, four wheelers, all that stuff and had nitrous to go karts. Just yeah, I don't know if you remember, they had those little pocket rockets and you could get like those little. These are handheld. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you get these handheld like nitrous things. I had like four of them, you know, taped together, and you could like pierce it, turn a valve, it instantly float the valve. So then I'm like trying to shim the stock springs <laughs> on the go kart. But anyways, fast forward to uh, I guess adulthood. Um, I really just wanted to build a street rod, and I, I found that um, there's the kind of like the street scene that they used to roll race, and uh, the that was interesting to watch like they would literally stop the highway like yeah. the whole fast and the furious thing um well and but, i feel like texas is kind of known for that a bit yeah. you know like it was it was not safe i did it one time <laughs> yeah and i was like i'm out um and then we we started then they started getting smarter and doing you know dig racing and uh had a little chevy colorado that i would race and um did that for a while how long realized ago was that that was 20, not that long ago, maybe five years ago. Okay. Five years ago or so. I've actually bought, I have a, a water restoration company. So I'm like, hey, what can I build? I can still take to work. Yeah. And so I bought this 05 Colorado with a camper shell. And like the roll cage would go, like went through the, you couldn't really see it unless you knew. And then I had to cut out like where I could, you know, make it quiet, go to jobs, uh, you know, put a bunch of fans, do my job, then leave and race people on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> but, was that a turbo anyway. uh steel it was yeah it started out as like a stock bottom end uh six liter i just got out of the junkyard and then um ended up putting uh just like a well, it wasn't just rod and piston because i ruined the crank so i put an lsa crank in it but basically a forged six liter stock yeah. heads with a single big single cool and that was like you drove that thing every day dude like- uh, yeah everywhere <laughs> but like it gets to a point where it sounds bad, but like there's, it's not like when you're racing someone, when you're above a thousand horsepower, like there's no, like when you're doing the whole childhood, you know, racing down the highway, like you know, you know, you're not going to lose. Like there's just, there's nothing out there that drives. Yeah. Uh, not nothing, but 
Yeah, if you're just and, beating around the street, yeah, stop like the stop like it's not deal. it's not fun anymore. Um, and the, and then I and then I've kind of found the street scene where yeah we're like trans break release you know it's a drag race you're doing a burnout you're backing up finish yeah. line camera and then that's when I found that there's a lot of money involved in that too, and so kind of started learning that and I quickly realized that a four thousand plus pound truck is not is, ideal. Is for not that. ideal. No. Um. So you did some cash days and stuff with the Colorado. Yeah, uh, I, I did a few of them. The only one I, I, won, I won one big one, San Antonio. It's like a 42 car uh, shootout. Uh, and it was like, that was that was a good race. Um, and it was just terrible. Like the surface was absolutely terrible. It was a big end race. Yeah. And we won that one. And that was like, I'm not going to say the only one, but uh, that was the, 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 the one big one for, for me. And like realizing like, hey, hold on a second. Like I could build something and, and make money doing this. Yeah, and like be competitive. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and it not be a little bit more in the hobby. Hey, maybe you can, you know, fund my tires or, you know, whatever else. And so we won. We actually, the only place we won is at that track. It, it just, it we worked. Had, for we you. Had, yeah, it worked. Uh, I learned that you could throw 500 pounds in the back with a radial and make that, you know, 40, 4390 is what it weighed with everything in it. With the, and, with the yeah. ballast and so, yeah. But with a radial with zero slip, it was actually pretty efficient. Yeah. Um, it was a leaf spring, I guess. Leaf spring, yeah. Yeah. Leaf spring. And no matter what I cut out of it, it was still heavy. Yeah, it's just a truck. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, honestly, man, the leaf springs, they're not a they bad option. They work really well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, they're they they are they're better than what people give them credit for. Absolutely. Oh. I think that, you know, uh, I think the biggest thing with that is, like, people don't put a good shock on it. Yeah. And, like, you really need a... A shock that'll get a hold of that loose spring. Yeah, exactly. In my opinion, anyway. No, that's they're that's pretty a great. Violent. They're pretty violent. Yeah, yeah, that's a great opinion. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I think a good shock is <laughs> good yeah, on anything. Yeah, good on anything. But yeah, uh, it's, it's definitely it, it drives me crazy when I'll see, um, you know, someone that has like this gangster rear end housing, right? Like something like that's what's sitting behind you, really nice piece. Oh and, yeah, that's <laughs> it. we got props, you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but they'll have that, and then it's like they got like a super cheap set of shocks bolted to it and it's like man i would rather you see, had an 88 and have like good shocks like i would rather you spent the money on the shocks you know um and that so 4000 pound truck doesn't yep. work it, you know not the most thing so then no. you, you start looking for a roller i guess or? yeah i found a i actually picked up this camaro for a buddy of mine he was like flipping cars and stuff and then like we we drive it to the shop and I'm looking at it and like, yeah, I'm going to take the motor out of this one. I'm going to put it in this one and I'm going to sell it. And, uh, and I'm like, okay, so that was my favorite car. So that maybe had something to do with it. Yeah, you like this. And I was like, dude, I was like, wait, you're going to take all of that out of that and put it in that. And I'm like, and you're going to make money off of that? I was like, let me do you a favor. <laughs> Just sell that and then sell that one to me. <laughs> and uh, all this time, because it was it was in bad shape. Like the amount of work they, they would have put in it, they, they most likely would have lost money. So uh luckily he was able to make make payments on it so i was racing the uh he, he let me take it home as a good friend of mine um and i raced a truck and then just like made payments on it i think it was like forty six hundred dollars i think he made like he didn't make much money off of it yeah and he let you he helped he me let, yeah he, he let, let you make, make payments, payments on it so <laughs> it was super cool. zero so, interest yeah i think it was like 600 bucks he made i think he bought it for four so uh had the car at the house and it just kind of sat there and like i would always go to the street races like see i got this colorado but man i'm gonna come out and i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna do got something this weapon yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be this so weapon fast that i made on that i got on payments yeah yep. i went to rent a roll and i got this <laughs> <laughs> rent -a -roll. and so like after about like that's how rent the roll gets you, by the way. You know what I mean? Like they see that's they they have what you want. Is that want. a thing? Rent a roll? Oh, absolutely. Was yeah. it like the rent a tire? Or no, the, or wheels. Yeah, wheels. Oh, yeah, they yeah, got yeah, the okay. cool wheels that <laughs> yeah. you need. Only like, like on payments. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry about how much it costs. It's yeah, only like, ninety nine ninety nine. Because a month. they sell you like how cool you're gonna look. <laughs> yeah. It's the same thing. You and your Camaro. Get lights like, on. Man, it. look how cool I'm gonna look. So yeah, I'm going to these street races, and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna be so fast. Like just wait, and like there is no shortage of people that say that you know i got this thing back at home and i'm gonna dust it off and i'm gonna come whoop everybody's butt and so i think it was like eight or nine months like my birthday was coming up and i was like oh no i'm turning into turning into one of those guys yeah oh no like, i gotta do something about this and so i was just tired of looking at the car 
It had been paid off at this point. It was, it was paid off. Yeah, it was yeah paid you off, owned it. All maybe. right. And they like, couldn't come repo yeah, it. No. <laughs> it <was sick. laughs> so, uh, I was like, all right, I got to do something about this. And then I had already built the motor. I actually built a, a 4.8 liter. Uh, I, I essentially just freshened it up and I put half inch studs in it. Um, and I actually took that motor and I wanted to break the 4.8 <laughs> world record with it. And I was like, but this chassis is trash. I was like, I actually tried to get someone. I was trying to find someone with a good chassis with a blown up motor, like friends of mine. I'm like, Hey, like, Hey, why don't we do this? Like you just pay for cost of this, this motor, what it cost me, which is not that much. Like all the labor, I did all the labor. And so why don't you pay me cost on the motor and then let me tune it and let's go break this record. And so no one took me seriously. Yeah. And like, oh no, like psh, stock motor, like that's not going to work. And so finally I was like, you know what? I'm going to put it, I'm just going to put this in my car. And so I want to say I threw the car together in a month, maybe. It was almost, it was like three weeks. Yeah. From like where I actually started working on the car and we threw this together. It was, it was bad. Like you think it's bad now. Like it was, it's really, it was rough. So what, <laughs> so just so people know, like they just see the car out racing, but what, what is it? Like what's the suspension chassis? Like So it was a, when I first got it, a stock front frame, a uh, ladder bar, they moved the firewall back and all stock suspension, nothing special there. There was no front shocks in it. And, um, Oh, like the 36 inch ladder. It's just like the competition engineering kit, like nothing special. The whole yeah. chassis is crooked, uh, which you're never on both sides at once. So you can't tell, but yeah. if you look at the wheel on one side, then go to the other side, you're like, huh, yeah. that's not right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, a, it's, a, it's an old bracket car. <laughs> it's an it. old bracket car. Yeah. That was built on somebody's barn floor. Probably. Absolutely. Probably in the dirt. Yeah. Uh, it's all square so, yeah, two just, back it, half. And yeah, yeah, square two back half. Mild you know, steel. Mild steel. Um, the MIG welds on the chassis actually don't look horrible, I don't think. I, <laughs> well, I, I really looked at I, it real hard. But the, yeah. It's probably best you don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's that's kind of what it started life out as. It had like no, like half the floor was gone. We threw this thing together, stock 4.8. We had a power guide my, my buddy built for me, uh, stock case, 176 year set. Yeah. And um, we took it out race. I wanted to have it fired up by, or like by my birthday. I think my birthday was two weeks away. And so like we had it, like I started it on my birthday, but I didn't drive it anywhere because we had a bunch of fuel pump issues, leak lines leaking and stuff. And then I think a week after that, we went into our first uh, um, cash days. And so like we had never made a hit. Um, I mean, I knew how to tune. So like I took it like down the street and I'm like, mm, pretty good. Yeah. Sure. I had a drive by wire throttle body because... I was going to do traction control based off of that. And, uh, did you learn how to tune from your the truck, truck, from the truck? So you had yeah. an understanding of how it all worked and <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, and so I actually paid someone to tune it the first time I did not HP tuners in the past, um, you know, LS stuff. Um, so the Holly was pretty easy. I had it tuned originally by a guy local to me and then we just kind of sort of, he just, you know, as a racer, you need, to, you need to learn how to do your you, own stuff. Yeah, you have to, I mean, because you, you can't expect be someone to answer on Saturday or Friday yeah. night or two in the morning on, you know, Monday, whatever, whatever it is. And so if you're going to be successful, you're hundred percent. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Like you at least need to know how to power. Or manage. you have to have a really big bankroll <laughs> where you not, can pay someone. Wrong. To, I've seen that. I've seen yeah, that. Where I've you seen can that. pay someone to answer on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. So do it together. We went to our first cash days. Um, in Dallas, back before it kind of went downhill, and we made no successful test hits. We went to uh, a halfway there. There was like this concrete road that we tried to make hits on. I think we made it like sixty foot twice, and we're like, "Oh, we're we're in trouble." And yeah. uh, anyways, loaded it up, and uh, we ended up going. The first race was just gnarly. It was just all the boost, tons of power. Like I didn't know what the hell happened. And what was happening is I had two 38 millimeter waste gates welded to the exhaust housings and it wasn't near enough. So as soon as I left it like off the trans brake within like a second, it was at like 35 pounds of boost and we don't race on good stuff. So it was just gnarly. And on top of that, we, there was an old rack with like urethane bushings and it, when we aligned it, it was fine, but it was so old that the, the urethane fell out. Oh. So the tires were moving. Oh, it sounds exciting. <laughs> so bunch of booze, tires moving. Yeah. yeah sick. <laughs> Went to the semifinals, no windows. Uh 
I actually decided to have the wastegate pointed up. You know, it's a bit in atmosphere. Well, when you have a helmet on and your visor's up and you're, you, you got that windows. no windshield. Oh, yeah, no windshield. So, like, not only was, like, pointed at trees sliding sideways, it, this, this wastegate was just blasting all these terrible welds. Have you seen them? Yeah. Straight into my eyes. And I'm, like, trying to drive. It was it was. Well, hey, this is funny because you told me that. You know, the roll racing was really unsafe. <laughs> like, that was your comment. You're like, man, I need to do something better. So now, a helmet on. Yeah, now we go <laughs> to where we have this Camaro with no windows, bad MIG welds, and the wastegate's blowing hot exhaust in your face. And well, the intention and it doesn't safety. steer. <laughs> and we're, we've made an improvement from <laughs> where we were that, at. Yeah. So, uh, well, you know, we're trying to be safe. Yeah, perfect. All right. Cool. <laughs> uh, so, uh it, yeah so that was that was interesting so we actually ran it for a while without windows i think i won like seven races um this is all just on the street all on the street yeah because i yeah, track no, would never track, no. <laughs> i halfway through i put a windshield in um but well, the, the other one, you know, you know, yeah. a windshield, but, but i mean as long as your boxers down you know what <laughs> yeah. the dirt track guys <laughs> it's it's funny like everyone has a story he has no floors it's a pro mod and i'm like hey uh, they were kind of right. I had a floor under me, but there's no, no, there's the rest of the floor was not yeah. there. Well, you didn't need that where you were going. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's kind of how it started. And since then we, we front halved it with like a, we put a Smith racecraft front in under the front, uh, tied that really in. Really nice stuff. Yeah. That's really yeah, nice. Yeah. That, that, yeah, that helps quite a bit. Um, we're actually slower in the, well, the front half of the track because, um, now because the weight distribution is all in the rear now. Yeah. And so, uh, at the track, it can't front half as hard, but the street, it's much better. Because it wants to flip over much backwards. Better. Yeah. Yeah. But it'll hook anywhere. So, well, yeah, that's we kind of what you do more of this. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, front half did, and then, and just like a, like a month ago, so I put an actual like 20 car cage in there, and half of it's mild steel still, like from the, the main hoop, I guess is what that is. The main hoop back is all like inch and seven eighths mild steel, and then the two by three, and then when I redid that forward, I did uh chromoly. Oh, okay. So try to save some weight out of it. Yeah. What does the thing weigh? Other cop questions. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure. I mean, it's lighter than four thousand pounds. <laughs> it's lighter, and, and that was a like to bring it back to the Colorado. Um, I w- learning how to go fast in that, which I. It's kind of a double-edged sword, like like telling people, like cause I, I get asked the question a lot, like, hey, where do I start? Um, well, starting anywhere is, is, is a good thing. Um, but the stuff I was able to learn with the Colorado, like being leaf spring, not really too adjustable. I mean, you can mess with preload and stuff like that. And, um, you you know, when you if you learn how to race a 4,400-pound truck, like when I went to the Camaro, you were like, you could totally – mess your tune up up and it still go down and you're like oh wow that was a, still a 550 somehow yeah well Sideways. the lighter the car i mean they just uh, they move you know what i mean it's just yeah and so that was like when i went from that to that it was like easy um a, a lot easier to to go faster with that and so that was huge help yeah in that regard but i wouldn't have learned the things i learned had i not well and i think that. the the one thing that you know I, I i talk to people every day man like that's that is my job right i i i talk to people about race cars and what race car accessories they could possibly need. And the thing that most people miss is they have their eye on whatever they think that they really need and they're not out making laps. Whereas like what you had at the time was just this truck that wasn't ideal that a lot of people probably wouldn't even load up to take to go race because they're like, well, it's a 4,000 pound truck. I'm not going to win. And you, and you know, it sounded like maybe you won one race, but you went and you you raced and you were a part of the community. You went out and you did laps and you learned stuff. And then you put yourself through the rent the roll program in a different position (laughs) where you had a lighter car and you just kept using what you had and you kept making laps with a car that's crooked, a car with no window. I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get on the no window train and the safety side. That's, I'm going to stand on a different pedestal, but, uh, but, the reality is you went out and you raced exactly what you had and you learned and you Absolutely. kept learning and you're, and you know, some of the best things that we've learned personally in our race program is stuff with stuff that's not ideal, right? You just keep, you got to work through it. And man, that teaches you a lot for when you don't have to work through it to mm-hmm. your point. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing for people wanting to start out. I mean, because the perfection doesn't exist. I mean, you get things pretty perfect back there. I did see. Thanks. But it, you sometimes just got to jump in the water and like and get started. Well, and honestly, man, what you know, what what our customers get to. I mean, Charlie's a nice car. You know, it's a pretty decent car. But and you've seen like some of the other stuff we race. Like, but dude, there's a lot of like racetrack fixes in our own stuff, and like. You know, like I, yeah, I'll mig weld together something if I have to. I'll do whatever because I'm at the racetrack. I don't care. I'm there to. You gotta let, make the next round. Yeah, let's get it. <laughs> you know, so a lot of times what our customers get and what we get is two completely <laughs> different things. Yeah, like, I can see that. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, and we do. We want to give if someone's paying us to you know build a car or do whatever. We want to give them every advantage we can possibly give them. But um, you know, at the end of the day, most people that are racing are like yourself that are you're doing all your work by yourself or some buddies that you've paid with a case of beer or whatever, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's not a fancy program and you're just doing what you can to make it to the next race, keep going. And yeah, which yeah. is cool. That's yeah. That whole car was built <laughs> making the next round or the next weekend. Yeah. And it's a whole uh, bunch yeah. of racetrack fixes <laughs> that, yeah, that you that keep going. Turned into a car. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, but yeah, that's about it. I, I guess that's kind of, you know, we got started uh, doing that. So you've only, how long have you raced the purple car? I think three years now. Okay. So I've had it together, I believe so, right around three years. Yeah. And you definitely, um, you, you kind of went to it, but you, you really specialize in the street stuff. Not that you don't race some, some other stuff, but. Yeah. So early, well, I did end up going, I took that 4.8 and then at the original goal of doing it with someone else's car, I actually ended up beating that record uh the 4.8 record in the purple in my car? car yeah i had to hang a ton of weight on the front of it and the 60 foot was i think like 115 or something yeah it was like a 482 at 147 so everything was wrong like i had a 456 gear i was almost at 9,000 rpm i was out of fuel uh but it we we did it yeah and um so yeah i ended up doing that did you do it on a slick or a radio radial oh, cool. on a radial and so I got, yeah, I got, I pretty much started in the street stuff is cause I, I really like the street and, and I don't like any of the dangers of it. I don't like the people that say, oh, the streets just, there's nothing like the streets. Like it's illegal. I don't really like that. Like that. I don't personally like that at all. It doesn't make me feel great staring at oak trees going 160, 130. <laughs> uh, yeah, whatever. Don't, don't say that. Yeah. No, but yeah, no, it's not, it's not, um, I don't get any kind of thrills off of that. The reason I like the street racing is because it takes, you know, having less to work with. If if you're smarter than your opponent opponent, or you put in more work or more time, or you know your vehicle better, you can you can win based off of that instead of like, oh well, this guy's got a 481X or this guy's got, you know, he's got 2200 pound chassis car. Like, yeah, in the street you you well not a little different nowadays, but when I started you'd see that chassis car, you'd be like, yeah, that's funny, like. Yeah, no idea what you're doing here. Um, so it gives you an advantage, not an adv not an advantage, uh, not by any means, but it gives you a chance. It gives you a chance to win um, when normally you wouldn't. You go to a track like there's 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 no way. Like unless the dude kicks the tire eight times or red lights, like you're not going to beat that car. And so it gives you a fighting chance to 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 win and uh, to compete. Well, and I think too, what what most people want and. Um is they want to sit next to cars that sit similar to theirs. Mm -hmm. That's really the goal. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think like with, like, I would love to see you not street race, right? Like that, again, that's kind of, you know, I think that's kind of the theme of what we do. Um, it, just because there is other options for you, but, oh, but yeah. then a lot of times like with, with no prep, it's so, it's so new. Like I kind of think of it as an adolescent kid. Right. Like when it was birth, it was a baby and then da 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 has happened. And now we're in like the awkward middle school years and still like figuring stuff still, out. we're still figuring life <laughs> yeah. out. We're, you know, we're going through puberty. We don't know what that's about. <laughs> yeah. And like we're trying to kind of become an adult maybe <clears throat> and like figure out what steps to take to do that. And, and that's kind of what no prep is right now. But like if you look at the radio stuff, it's more of let's just say it's graduated college, right? Like it's, and there's a lot of really great class options for someone like you that like, 
you know, may not have the best engine, may not have the whatever, but there's this, there's this stereotype that radial racing is expensive. And that's actually not true because like our four door Malibu has a lot more money in it than our radial car ever did. <laughs> yeah. Because no prep's not divided. Even on the street, you're not really divided. Like you said, you used to laugh at people with chassis cars, but now Let's turn it. Yeah. And I think they're, the the thing is is like people that are good at race caring in whatever form of race car they're good at if they decide to change there was a whole thing i think of like wow well those guys can't do that well they can they just have to want to do it if they want to do it they can do it it's just a matter of them making that decision absolutely so. and i think that in in like going back to like me not liking street racing it was really exciting to see more and more top end races, yeah. back end races. No, and that's a great and, avenue, and w- which is awesome because we don't really street race much much at all anymore. You know, we got a trailer. We want to bring the family. Yeah, um, and, and and that is much more appealing uh, than going out and doing illegal stuff till six a.m. and watching the sun come. Like I don't I don't like doing that. It was just the probability of. of winning was much greater. Yeah. And so going to these top end races, you, you have a similar, you know, let's just say, uh, similar chances of winning as far as the surface goes, it's going away a little bit just because there's only so many back ends you can race on before everyone has data. Uh, but a lot of like the airport races, back end races where they can actually implement safety. Yeah. Um, you know, have walls or fields or some, something where it's not actually, you know, dangerous. And so that, that is much more appealing. It's also, I think it bridges the gap between, you know, having the nicest car still may not win, even if they have data, there's still, there's still that variable there. Um, but it's, it's kind of, it kind of bridges that gap, I believe. No, I, I, I absolutely. Cause it's like, that. Oh yeah, I was here last month and I went this, then, you yeah. know, then people have a, a bigger idea that, uh, instead of, you know, going to a virgin road and be like, you know, I can feel it out. Like, all right, we got this, you know, yeah. <laughs> like it's a little different. Uh, a lot of people swing and miss there. So it's very cool seeing how it's transformed. It almost seems like people are going more front side these days, which we're going to kind of, we, we, we try to compete in that arena. We won some racers doing that. Um, it's just tougher. It's di- It's really just different. It's Well, the way I see it is like, like when, when Brad and I put Charlie together, like we actually thought like, we did some stuff that I thought was good ideas for backtrack stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, we did one race that was from like, like from the eighth mile. And I think like probably uh, Colt was there with Johnny cash. And I think they ended up that they run it up and they went like five seventies or something. And um, I, we, we made like our second lap and we went like a six Oh or whatever it was. And I got back and I'm like, dude, I have no desire to do this. And Brad's like, this sucks. Like not nothing against anybody that wants to do that. But like after you've already gone fast, you're like, man, I really don't want to slow down. And I think that's what I'm seeing with a lot of guys that started out in the street and backtrack stuff is like, you know, you went and you ran it on a radial and you went, you know, you went 480s, yeah. right? And you're like- A little stock motor, yeah. Yeah, and you're like, that was fun. Yeah. I'd like to go faster. <laughs> and that's just the, the natural progression of it. And I do think like- you know, in no prep right now, there is that the whole rules talk stuff like that. The interesting thing is I think there's actually far more people that are upgrading their car than, than are crying about it. Like you see a lot of people crying about rules, but there's a whole nother big group of people, people that call here every day that are trying to, you know, to, you know, to go faster. And I think you have a lot of guys like, you know, we came from the radial stuff and, Dude, I mean, you can relate this. You have a little girl. Like, man, I love I loved going to Ducks Race. It was fun. We got to go really fast, but we were there for a week. And I'm like, I just don't want to do that all the time. Every once in a while now, it's cool. But, like, to dedicate a week, I'm good, right? Like, all the time. So, the front side, no prep. The track's really not that bad. You're still going fast, and you're doing a one-day shootout for fair money. Mm-hmm. So, now – you're seeing this mix of people yeah. that re- that raced on a, some sort of more organized level. And then you have people like 
you know, as yourself that started from the street and you're like, now we're all meeting together. Yep. And that meeting is kind of going a bit rough. Um, <laughs> yeah. But because it's just different. There's just there, way yeah. two differences of opinion. But no, absolutely. And, and it's really interesting seeing how kind of how it's transforming. And, and really, like even with with my car, it's like, hey, where try to predict where it's going. Like, how do I need to change my car in order to compete? I mean, obviously we need to get faster regardless, but how much faster, what do I need to do? I mean, cause you see a lot of people changing their cars to race down, which I, I mean, I agree with, like, if you just need to change your doors to be all steel, all glass, then yeah, by all means do that because the next class up is a pretty big jump. Yeah. You know, so, you know, where exactly do you go? And I don't really have a choice cause I, I cut my firewall out. Yeah. So I have lighter, faster, like that's it. And so, um, that's where we're trying to go with it. And, uh, but it, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun, you know, figuring out how to, <laughs> it's insane. Like, man, how fast we're going on no prep is just, Oh, it's crazy. It's nuts. Well, like, like now and, uh, <laughs> it is, it's really fast. And yeah. like, man, we put Charlie together. We, um, you know, it, you can tell I'm a class racer because numbers like don't scare me, but yeah. I can see you're like, <laughs> I, I actually wish we lit the boards. So I, I really don't care. It's very, it's very weird. You know, um, oh, dog. Yeah. Uh, Cause like I am terrible at lying. Uh, at one point in my so life, that's a great quality, you know, right? like, <laughs> like bad quality. And so like, how fast did you go? I'm like, fast <laughs> uh and like i'm really bad at like not sharing information and like you see it all it's so funny because like after you get to know people you know they're playing with numbers you know yeah. people are asking oh i want a 20 like no you didn't yeah <laughs> or whatever it is uh well that's so, kind of, i mean i know we can't <laughs> like the boards on the back side i guess you could if you oh like, you everyone everybody has draggies yeah. everybody knows and so i think we've got like as i've uh race in the community we all kind of know each other i don't really care i mean because at the end of the day like if i just went a, a 5-0 and you're going 50s like you're not gonna catch not not that you're not but like if i'm I'm racing myself every single round so it doesn't matter what you went i yeah. don't care what you went um it's you know look at the data look at the numbers what can i do from here how can i improve you know what's the tire doing what's the suspension doing what's like how do i beat my my last lap um, that's a really great way to look at it. And I, and I see a lot of people that, that come from the background that you come from, they don't think like that. Like that's more of a, and this is a compliment. This is, that's more of a mature racer. And you've only done this for th what? Five three, years. Yeah, well, five, three five, with year, the, five years. Yeah. So to look at it that way is a great, like, that's a great winning mindset. Cause it does, you're right. It doesn't really doesn't matter who's in the next lane. You're you, and it sounds so cheesy, but you are racing yourself. You're racing, absolutely, and you're trying to make yourself better. That's really all that matters. And and not to, not to sound any way, but any time that, not any time, but like let's just say ninety percent of the times I lost, I lost. I was I was racing myself, and I lost. Yeah, you know, whenever uh, there is more often recently in the last year, but like. There's, there's, there's not a time where like where you did your job exactly the way that you did it with your equipment and, and, and got out ran. Like that was a, it's a very small percentage of the time. Yeah. Um, it's that you were trying to race yourself and, and, and you screwed up. Yeah. Um, I got in trouble the other day though. We, uh, there was a track record. There's been three track records. I've tickled all of them, <laughs> but it's like, we're going into the final and I'm like, I got this guy covered by four tens. Like he's not catching me. But if I go another 0. 0.4, 0.04, .04, whatever, 400s faster, you can have the track I get record. another thousand bucks and I get, I get a track record. Yeah. And then it wheelies and does a bunch of, you know, it and, does then something like, stupid. and then you lose in the final. And you're like, uh, that was dumb. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> but I guess it's not really racing myself. That was racing a, a yeah, number, yeah, yeah, you're just like an number. opponent. It may not have been the opponent, but you, you can't get your, yourself in trouble. Uh, and I think maybe all of us have done that in the room. Well, and I, I, dude, absolutely. <laughs> and I, well, I'm lucky that I, like I have a Brad. So like, um, my partner is Brad is very, very methodical and like, man, our car hardly ever spins a tire. Like it's, it's pretty dang rare. 
Um, but if I was the one <laughs> that was on the keyboard, no, there's no tenth in here. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> we would probably. I, if I was the one on the keyboard, we would blow up a lot more engines. Uh, we would uh, not win near as many rounds, uh, and we would probably go fast, really spur, sporadically. Yeah. Like it would be like, wow, oh, you went like you just you know, gained three tenths. How did that happen? <laughs> Absolutely no. Yeah, there's definitely a balance there. There is, um, yeah. When to hang it out, when to yeah. not. And, um, Which I think you can get a little bit cl- like with the, like the radial stuff. Like you can get a little bit smarter with trying to go faster too, because it's a little bit, you well, know, adding half a degree or a degree on the big end is is a little more calculated than like him hey, put ten pounds on the button. Exactly. You know? <laughs> well, and I think that's the one of the things I do think that anybody that wants to be successful, um, I think they should put their car in a radial because what happens is you learn what the potential of that combo is like now absolutely you, it's it's a great surface it's not going to spin or you know it can spin but it it's just a really great surface and it's a very repeatable surface where you can really pick on that combo and and find more and find more and find more and learn how to go fast and then when you put it on the slick you know you have a lot to go off of where the slick even on the front side stuff, you're still chasing the surface a bit, you know, and absolutely. Yeah. And I think, you know, what people in this world, what people's um, thought of a good surface is, is way different <laughs> from what the world that yes. I come from. Like, <laughs> it, man, we, we've learned a lot on a radial, um, just like exactly how you said it. And, and I haven't actually noticed too like whenever you get a really good slick, like on a good surface and maybe it's just my setup, but there isn't actually a, a you know, people are like, Oh, you pick up three tenths on a radial. I don't, there's not that big of a gap no, there's not. For, for, for my car. Um, but no, you learn a lot. I mean, the first, when I started doing like the record thing, uh, I actually did that during a race and uh, I was actually trying to go to another track and my buddy's like, Oh, come here, come here, come here. It's this hood to hood, whatever. Uh, deal no time race so i'm like i'm not trying to race i'm trying to beat a record and it's like yeah, it'll be fine just just get in a class so you can make laps well we go like 10 rounds and i start learning uh you know about um you know before like i always thought like hey you just raise the rpm and you 60 foot harder like i just thought that was a thing and what i learned there is like i could raise the rpm and just, just a lot of different things like starting line ratio like like it didn't actually result in a better 60 foot it's kind of what i did after the button release yeah and so like learning those and, and using those incrementals is huge as well as like knowing like okay when you're getting hot lapped and that transmission tamp goes up like what the looking at does. your wheel slip like how is your how is your converter acting it's like hey look we turned it up and we went the same speed hey we turned it up we went the same speed what happened why uh what's the air doing you know and it's you can look at stuff you can get way more data consistent data you know, uh, well, Brandon, he lent me some shocks to try out and he's like, are they working? I'm like, I don't know. Cause, uh, I've been to like 10 tracks that have all been different and they've all changed. And so the, there's just so many variables and like getting, uh, going to a place with a radial, taking that slip out of, out of the equation, the tire slip, you get a ton of data and you learn a lot about your combo. Yeah. Even shocks, you know, Hey, okay, let's lead the lead the same. How fast, how much does two clicks do? Yeah, well, of course, you obviously have to have shock data. Um, you know, what does two clicks do? You know, how many tenths out does that move my front end rise? Yeah. Uh, how does, you know, the rear start? Like all that stuff is you get a man, you get a lot of, of course, you have to monitor the data, but you get a lot of data off that and you can learn, um, you know, based off that temperature. Well, and a lot of it's just taking you're you're constantly trying to take variables out of it. Like mm-hmm. you talked about, like your transmission. Well, like, you know, the reason that people use pit coolers. Yeah, it is to oh, cool yeah. them down. But the reality, what they're really using them for is they want the transmission to be at the same temperature consistent. every time that they go up. So it's consistent. You know, you're like, you're just trying to take variables out. And then when you get to a place where you can no longer control the track variable, at least you have now all this data that you can go back on and, you know, taking good notes and having a log book and like all yeah. these things, like that's what it takes, you know, and that's the, the most underused undervalued thing is just keeping track of your stuff like i i talked to a promo guy the other day that um we were talking about shocks and um he was um he had a specific brand of shock and the way that they do the valve package is a little bit different than everybody else um and he said was saying that, that he had data for 
how warm it was outside because oh, if the you know if the shock was warmer if the it was warmer outside then it acted differently so he he needed to change you know the setup for the the warmth of the air which is like you know like to your point you can chase data if you want but the other thing is you can chase it but you have to know what you what you can do with it absolutely and yet and yet to well, acknowledge that a lot of it's there yeah. And that it's going to do something. Yeah. You may not know what it is, but it's going to do something. You know, we were at a New Year's race a couple of years ago in Austin and all these people came from out of town. Well, they went out and tested on the road. I'm like, that's kind of a big no, no. So I heard about that and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go out there too. So I went and tested. I made one pass just to verify my car was working. Yeah. And, um, or two pass, two passes just to make sure like they get everyone was working correctly. I was still pretty new to fuel tech. <laughs> And so everything worked, put it on the trailer. Like, you're not gonna make more hits. I'm like, no. It's like, did you look at the forecast? <laughs> like, it's 70 degrees right now. <clears throat> when we raced, it was 28 degrees. Yeah. So everyone's data went straight into the trash. And a lot of people like going back to the shock thing. You know, I called my shock guy. I'm like, how many clicks do you think this is gonna be? Because I know it does something. I know that it's gonna tighten it up, but how tight? You know? Yeah. And he said, you know, I was like two clicks or something. And and I think I loosened it up two clicks and it was still tight. Yeah. But people don't realize that. And you know how how the weather is affecting everything. It's not just like, hey, it's gonna go faster. Um, but man, as it's 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 just no prep is like juggling all the data, but going on that radio, getting that data, knowing that that you're hot lapping, putting all the, the these pieces together the best you know, the best way that you can. And I think that's what um I would just sort of say I'm good at, but uh, I'm I'm decent at juggling that data. And so that's why that's what got me successful in that arena. And now it's kind of coming together. But well, on the other, I mean, the more laps back to the laps point, like yes. the more laps that you make, you don't have to be the smartest person in the world to start seeing patterns and mm -hmm. keeping track of those patterns and, and do it like it. It's always like Brad gets so frustrated when people will say like, ah, oh, my car has a mind of its own. It's like, nah, no, it actually doesn't. You're the mind. <laughs> you are the right? mind. Yeah. You're like, you're in control. Of you're ship. in control of this deal. <laughs> And, you know, it's your job to monitor. Now, can you have a mechanical failure or something that make it do something stupid? Absolutely. But you should be able to point out that it's a mechanical failure or whatever pretty quickly because this is your car, you know? Yeah. But, no, definitely kind of. It's all uh, – everything helps. And then, like, the laps definitely, like, knowing your car like that, it's a huge thing. Yeah. Knowing it, what it's going to do, how it's going to respond. Well, I want to feel like like – like my car right now, like, you know, when I sit in the seat, it feels like home, right? Like, I'm like, I know exactly what it's going to do. I can almost predict it, right? Like, yeah. And I'm sure you feel the same way. And you get into it and you just feel good, right? Yeah. Like, you know where everything is, you, all this stuff. And and a lot of times I think that people change so much stuff that they know, they yeah. don't feel like, yeah, they, just, they have no idea what it's going to do. Yeah. No, absolutely. It's, it's hard. Uh, Cause like one thing you're trying to do is you're trying to keep up with the Joneses. You know, you're trying to get faster. You're trying to do up. You're changing parts. You're changing shocks. You're changing bar angles. You're, ch you're changing all these things and to try to go <coughs> fast. And I think that's what uh, has helped me having a ladder bar. You know, you see people like moving bars in the pits. You and know, you like, can't. <laughs> this is what it is. <laughs> I got like two holes. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? I got fast and faster. Yeah. <laughs> I can yeah. flip over. Yeah. <laughs> and, um. So like, I think that that's actually been a blessing as well. Cause it's, it's like, I can't, you see, I see a lot of people get caught up. You know, what's your anti-squat? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. That is a good number. I probably should know, but I don't, uh, cause right well, now I, it doesn't serve me to know because I, I no, you're right. It, what is it doing? You have a fixed instant center. That's I, is I, what it is. I, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, um, and then I can control it with shock. Yeah. And, well, I have and, and to your point, like I, I see a lot of people like, we you know, we sell a lot of Mustang housings and stuff and, and, uh, you know, torque boxes is always a huge question. Like, you know, do I need this? Well, not really, man. I think a lot of times like people, you know, all the different holes and stuff is great. Uh, and there's a lot of, you know, great things that you can do with that. Uh, but a lot of times, man, you give people too much. It just, it just makes them lost, yeah, you absolutely. know? And like, there's really like, you know, like my buddy Hammer makes those really trick, you know, eighth inch adjustable oh, full link nice brackets. Stuff, yeah. Oh, super nice. But the amount of people that actually need that is so slim, you know, like honestly, man, most of your pro mod car, not most now that's a little different, but you know, stuff that was built 10 years ago, they had all that stuff. And a lot of them still just had holes, you know? So like, 
you can chase whatever rabbit you want to chase. Um, but chasing going down the racetrack is the most important yeah. thing. And, and even I get caught up a lot of like in the data and stuff and, um, and yeah, there's a lot of information out there. So you have to pick and choose, yeah. you know, what, what is it, what is it, what is it what you want to tune off of? I actually, I'm, I need to put like a little sheet on my laptop somewhere. That's like a checklist of like, okay, what is it doing? And just like the fundamentals, the meat and potatoes of, yeah. you know, you already did everything else like in testing. Yeah. Look at absolutely everything. That's like, what is the main points here? Cause you know, I caught myself the other day, um, looking at way too many things. And I, I was like beating my head against the wall. I was like, I can't figure it out. I can't figure it out. And I was looking at it like this. I couldn't see the obvious stuff. And I was like, okay, when I was dumb and didn't know anything, like what would I do? And I'm like, liar. You know, I was like, lower the tire pressure and smack it. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, let's try that. Like, just like, forget that I know all of this data, throw it out the window. And it worked. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so it's very, I could definitely see like, oh God, throw bar angles into that mix. You know, uh, what was it, you know, in 2000 and, you know, at this yeah. surface, well, and even, <laughs> was, what barring was I at? You're like, I don't know. Well, even like our car, like we, like, um, the four link, uh, you know, the four link plot that's in it, it's been in it for like, when we first put the car together, we changed it a couple of times, like, you know, like looking for some stuff. And then, then man, it's just, it's been what it's been. We, we, I mean, we adjust shocks, but like, that's a huge misconception though, is like, People think that, you know, sometimes there is a need for a four link change. I get that. But if you're chasing four link setups like that, you shouldn't be swinging bars every race. Like yeah. that should not happen. It, it should be pretty like we even when we put it on a radial, um, we actually ran the same four link setup as what we have in it right now for no prep, uh, which is not it wasn't ideal, but we just wanted to see. How much do we not have to change? And we went, you know, it, it didn't go crazy fast, but it went fast and um, faster than probably what the average person would go. You know, that probably would have changed way more than what we did and not had the same result, you know. Absolutely. But, and, and and it was funny you say that because, like, just n not too long ago, I'd learned the same thing is because we had uh, – we went from – it was that last yellow belly race, the short and sweeter. I think yeah. it was, I think that's what it was. But then we went from the street and, uh, we ended up winning that one. We went to the yellow belly, which is kind of right in the middle, fast front, of, you know, front half. Yeah. I uh, wish it did well there. Uh, there's like a five thirty class. That was interesting. Anyway. Yeah. The um, little gangster yeah. Class. Went to the finals in that, uh, which was huge. The pot was huge. I didn't realize it till it happened. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, anyways, and then we went to radio prep. And I had it in the most low prep, no prep bar. That bar was slammed all the way down. And then we went to when the big realization is when I went out to the 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 radial and like we went a personal best by like a good bit. Yeah. And so and then moving forward and basically we did that all with the same same exact bar angle, just shock adjustments, weight adjustments, things like that. Didn't change anything, and we were rather successful. Went to the finals in in the uh, small tire all out, which is insane. It was, yeah. it was actually kind of cool. I raced another car, car called the Kraken, oh, that's but cool. it was like a freaking nine hundred inch nitro. Like it was not a the same was, ballpark. So it was a big Kraken. <laughs> I yeah. can see, I can see him, I can see him, but he was he was like the baby Kraken. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that was super awesome, and he was like a fan of my car. It was it was it was really cool actually. So, but we did good, and then and then we went out the next weekend, and I changed it to my radial bar angle. It didn't do any better. Yeah. And I was like, well, wait a minute. I mean, ob obviously I, I have like no, I don't have big adjustments, but it made me realize that like you see people, like you said, changing bar angles, like between rounds. And it's like, does that really need to happen? Or is there something else going on? Yeah. it's. I mean, really like for us, like it's, it's always shock adjustments. And then to, yeah. mount, you know, when we went to the radial, really a difference is, your your front to rear bias changes, but depending on what you're doing, and then the travel in the front end changes. You know, when we're on a we're on a front side no prep, we 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 run a lot more travel than if we're on a radial deal. You know, we take all the travel out of that thing, and really, it's as simple as that. You know, and and it needed more than what we did to yeah. go. Like it went one eleven the way that it sat, and we tried to go a bit faster than that, and then started wheeling. So like the Cars got 105, 104 in it, 
but not the way that's when you yeah, start. But it, the exactly. average person, like if you're going, you know, if you're going mid 120s on a front side no prep, and then you go to a, re- a radial deal and you're like, you would be happy going one teens, you probably don't really have to change that much. Yeah. So the Mustang's a little different because it's a shorter wheelbase. What's your car? Do you remember what your wheelbase is? I think it's, it's 106. Or yeah, it's, it's more than that. I think it's 110. I think it's about the same okay. what Charlie is. I think it's like one, 109, 110. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think. Uh, from I I'm know. trying to remember from Mike Farmer's car. I, I, it's, it's, it's longer than Mustang. <laughs> yeah, and the wheelbase, <laughs> so. like, if we would have ran that same setup we had in a Mustang, it would have flipped over backwards. And, 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 yeah, like, when you're splitting hairs like that, like, and I totally get it. It's You see people chasing that, like, on a backside, and you're like, dude. And, and when we did all this testing, the shock data, like, for, like when you change bar angles, there is very much different shock data. Yeah. It is doing something different. But the way that the car set up, the crank center line, the weight bias – it's 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 still uh it, it didn't do a whole lot different no and you know what i see most people struggle with is on the when they call is like they think that there's a magical bar angle to fix crappy weight biased because they don't want to add weight to the race car and like there's not a magical unicorn out there that will do that you know like it you can there's some band-aids you can do but really man at the end of the day weight bias a lot of that stuff and i'm sure i can see your face you don't want to get into that no no no, you're good good. Uh, he's like we're saying too much (laughs) i think it's pretty it's pretty known now and the and one thing that i was interesting about and 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 you would know i don't i just i read one article and i i basically i heard or read that or maybe I caught it in like a Tim McAmis video or something, and it was like, "Oh, those Pro Mods fifty fifty. and I was like, "What?" Huh? It's like, and those go pretty fast. Yeah. So it's like, well, what are we doing wrong? Because uh, if they can be fifty fifty and go that speed, you know, and then but a radio car needs fifty eight percent nose, like who's right? Um, and I think that that obviously matters on the chassis. Um, yeah. Or, well, or what? I mean, I don't know. Is that is that an accurate statement on? The, uh, it depends on how you're going to race the car. So. Um, and of course they have wheelie bars. There's a lot going on there. Yeah. Like the, you know, the really, and this is a difference between a slick and a radial in general, like a big tire car, you tune a lot off the wheelie bars. The wheelie bars make them do a lot of really cool things. Like that's how they're controlling their wheel speed. The, the, the wheelie bars are actually staggered to make them drive straight. Mm-hmm. So you, depending on how much stagger you put in them, like, like this, they're really, they're actually, they get a bad name, right? In our small tire world, the, the big tire cars are really cool. When you really, when you're going sub one every time on a surface, that's like, that's nuts. we yeah. would struggle with. Right. Yeah. And you're tuning with the wheelie bar, you're doing all this stuff. Like it's really fun. It is really, really fun. But then like on a radial car, depending on how you power management, uh, how you do the power management and the torque converter, that really dictates how that front to rear bias works. Like I have a guy like Jason Waterman. He's won, and I'll hate that I say this, but it's true. He's won more lights out and no mercy events than anybody, any tuner, period. And there are probably going to be somebody that disagree with me, but he just told me his event win number the other day, and it was almost 30. So like at that one event, okay? Oh, well. And um, he'll be like, number nine or 10 qualifier and he'll take that baby all the way to the winter circle. And a lot of it is he runs his cars, not as front end. I'm not gonna give out the exact number, but he runs them a lot less in the front end than what people would think because people on radio, a lot of times they're chasing a number. They want that number every time, man. Well, you're not going to run that number in the middle of the day. You need a little bit no, of different yeah. setup. And a lot of your rounds, guess what? They're in the heat of the day. It, it's not going to take that number. And if you run them a little less than what most people think I, is ideal, it's probably going to go down the racetrack a bit more. Yeah. And he's a perfect example of that. So, um, and I think people do get tied up in numbers. And, yeah, like and, it needs to be exactly this. Yeah. And, and just like cookie cutter, this magic bar angle this way bias and they yeah. think that they're going to get that number and it's not it's a very there's there's still a variable there absolutely and the, you just have to give the race car what it wants mm-hmm. it doesn't matter if you think what it wants is wrong if it wants it give it to it and then you know the key is to make the race car happy yeah um and i think like mark mincer's really taught me this a lot like like mark's our guy like uh, uh you know we'll have mincer shocks until the day we die because i just i love mark 
Uh, but in the early days of the radial stuff, it was like the wild, wild west. Like there wasn't a, and it kind of like no prep, right? Like there wasn't really a specific way to run a radial car. And they were taking cars that were set up for, um, for slicks and doing a lot of stuff. So he was constantly having to band-aid the shocks to make the car do what they needed it or what they even thought it should do. And that, you know, that's one of the reasons I think Mark is so great at making shocks is because he's not so narrow minded, right? Like if the car's not this, I don't want to mess with it. He, well, he's messed up with, he's, he's fixed some jacked up stuff and made it and got it into the winter yeah. circle to your point, right? Your car, like it's not ideal. No, I mean, a lot of that stuff, I mean, not calling shocks a band aid, but they kind of can be sometimes. I mean, having a good shock is yeah, obviously a baseline, but they can band aid some issues sometimes, especially if they're custom valve. For yeah. That. You know, you're, you know, that's, you know, a lot of times people call and they'll, they'll want like an AFCO or, you know, or they're like, should I spend the few hundred dollars more to get the mincer? Yeah. Well, you absolutely. Yeah. I yeah, think you're getting that's something a, I think you're getting a custom shock, whoever you, you use is, is absolutely crucial, especially absolutely. in no prep. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like, okay, let me put a, okay, let me get your radial front shock and let's go put it on my car where my crank centers at 15 and a half inches. Like, and see if it holds it down. Like, or it's, it's going to act completely different. Like, yeah. The weight bias is different. The way it transfers is different, but you know, and so, uh, you know, having that adjustability and like you said, your guy, uh, that's huge. Yeah. And you want a shock to be in a certain range, you know, and like yeah. when you get a off the shelf shock, they're not, yeah, it's just, yeah. you know, it's whatever's the most common Mm -hmm. Right, which is typically a, you know, a big tire bracket car or something like that. Yeah, I get a AFCO big gun and throw it on the back of a '80s bracket car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or a Coney, you know. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's funny. Well, uh, what? So for you personally, man, what, what, what's been some of your favorite memories doing this? Oh man, it's a uh, favorite memories. I think that it, man, it's really kind of transformed from what it, like from where I started to where I'm at now. I mean, it went from, um, just wanting to win. Not that I don't still want to win. Yeah. Just wanting to win and compete and being the absolute best at what I did. And then now like I, there's like this brotherhood. I'm meeting people from all around the country, great people. Um, and as I guess you would say that a little lifestyle yeah, it, it's it's a lifestyle. It's not a hobby. Yeah, at least for me. Now, Martin Doesn't Conley, have to be for that you. was sitting in your seat, said the exact same thing. It's, he said, "I hate when people call it a hobby." It is not a hobby. <laughs> not a hobby for me. And man, it's it's completely changed. Uh, you know, from where it was, where it is now, and you know the connections I have, and the, the friends that I have, and the deep relationships that I've acquired is uh, life changing. Really, um, I've lost a lot of friends, and I've gained a lot, and uh, and, and so like the memories, I mean, bringing my family, I think has been like, number one, my daughter, uh, my boys, they can't go to <coughs> the racetrack as much. I don't have, they have them with my ex. I have two boys and, um, they don't come with me as much and they're really starting to get into it. it they're getting, starting to get, I actually got them, my, my oldest, I got him into racing by the no limits game. Okay. And cause so, cause he likes computer tech stuff. So I was like, Hey, like play this. And then like, I was like, is that a pro charge card? <laughs> you know? So one of the, yeah, that, um, it's kind of weird. So there was that picture. I don't know if you've seen of my daughter back in. Yeah. Europe. It's a beautiful picture. And which, which we do every weekend. I mean, like, and, and her, the dress is not our, she will not wear anything else. Like she has to wear else a dress. Like that's her thing. I got she's two daughters. Like, I can relate. Really, yeah, so it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. she, she wants, I got to, one she wants she's to, she's Moana. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. She wants to back her dad, dad up. So I don't know if it's one particular memory, but you know, and some people will get this and some, you know, the people that race people that don't, but like being, you have like every, rush of human emotion at like one time it's you know you have like this competition you have this adrenaline you have everything i have my daughter up there doing this i i sometimes don't forget to watch my wife <laughs> and i'm like looking at her doing this and i'm like oh wait no no, no that wasn't her hold on <laughs> so like yeah, she's so just, cute she, yeah. she, she, lo yeah, I'll she loves i'll drag it. this thing to the wall that's I'll, what you want me to do I'll, baby <laughs> i'm waving at her and 
I don't know if it, there's any one specific memory um, that really stands out. Just having my family and having a family um, has has been amazing. Like it's been just nothing I ever sought out. Yeah. Uh, it's an unexpected but, benefit. It, absolutely. Absolutely. And so, and then being here, it's freaking awesome. Um, just, just, I, I didn't expect any of this to happen. It was just like, I want to go fast, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but yeah, having that brotherhood, having that, having, having that family of people that truly care about each other, that want to help each other, that want to help each other succeed. Is Cause a lot of the time, like, uh, you know, growing up in a small town or, or whatever, like you, there's not a lot of people elevating you to be better, to pushing you as a person to be, you know, be, to be better. And a lot of the things that I like to do is not only in racing to push myself, I want to push myself to be a better person. I want to grow. I want to grow the people around me. I want to help the people around me. Yeah. Um, so, so that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And so uh, just uh, us all, you know, excelling, elevating each other. Like that's, that's awesome. And so as a whole, uh, there's a lot of memories that just, that, that flash through, Yeah, you know, having that family, having the, you know, little moments with, with my kids being able to, we're typically the, I'm not going to say we're the first there. We're hardly ever the first there, but we're the last to leave. No, I heard some stories. (laughs) So we're the, we're the last to leave, you know, we, we take our time, you know, we're in our little bitty camper and got the kids and we're, we're, everyone's gone. There's no one there. So like we, they can ride around scooters and stuff and fall down and you don't have to worry about, you know, any of those other day, you know, people driving around or whatever. Yeah. They run around catching bugs like it's just well, and the the racetrack like you know I know that you, that that's kind of the beauty of uh, of racing out of the track is like and the track almost kind of takes care of the kids a bit you know you don't want to be yeah. haphazard but like I mean I grew up at the racetrack like I you know I don't think my dad ever knew where I was you know <laughs> um, but you know I could go in it. You know, be me being a kid, I could go into anybody's trailer and they would take, they would like look at me. And they may not even know who I am, but like, oh, that that looks kind of like Ronnie. You know, let, we'll give him yeah. a drink. You know? <laughs> yeah, and and that and that's all. Like like you're saying, like I was saying, like with the uh, uh, having that family. At first, I'm like I'm like a little over what they call a parachute parent, or yeah. whatever. So I'm pretty <laughs> bad about being overprotective. And now that like I I know a lot of the people at the racetrack. They know the people. They know whose trailer they can go in. Yeah. And so, hey, that's Parker's trailer. Yeah, whatever. I'm going to go over to Parker's. He'll be over there half the time. You know? And so, like, having those friends and that you trust. Yeah, and, watch them make little yeah, racetrack friends is yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's it's super cool. And so, um, I think, like, it's it's really, that's really starting to happen more so in the last, I don't know, year or so. Uh, and really, that trailer helped a lot. Like, being able to stay at the track. Because, like, my two boys, like, I kind of ruined it for them in the beginning because, like, they're having to sleep at the truck, like even at the track. Yeah, you know we, we're on an open trailer. They're having to sleep in the the suburban or whatever vehicle we took, like because they're they're past. They're, you know, some of those races go till two, three in the morning. Yeah, even at the track. And so, uh, but yeah, having that little camper and having like uh, it's like our home away. Like, dude, we're we're actually in there more. <laughs> I'm I'm in that trailer more than uh, this last year, I, which which I want to change. But we've been in that trailer more than we have actually been home. Wow. So it's been it's it's been crazy. Uh, but a blessing at the same time. And we've seen a ton of the world. Um, I think I'd been to like one state before I started racing two states. And I've been to like 20. So I, don't, I don't even know. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. California, New York, like it, it has taken us across the world. Um, which has been amazing, like traveling and uh, meeting people. And yeah, so. No, I, love, up I, I love that part about it, you know, just being oh. being on the road and seeing everything. And yeah, it's 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 really cool, man. That's um, I mean, what a time to be alive, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and it's cool too. Like we even um, you know, we have sponsors, obviously, and then we're we're like selling parts on our website. And so I'm talking to you know, like Nitrous Express. Like I talk to Poland like every day. I talk to my converter guy like every I got probably talking on the phone too much, but like I'm talking to these people constantly. And so we like develop a much better relationship. So like when I go home, I might stop in Kentucky, you know, my buddy Paul's house. Like, and so like with having that business, having racing, it's like you have all these really good relationships all over this, all over the United States. Yeah. It's, it's really cool. No, I feel like, you know, like I feel like I could break down anywhere. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, it's a weird, a lot of people wouldn't get that, 
you know, but like, yeah, it doesn't matter where we're at in the world. We have friends. Yeah. And that's a really, um, that's a really lucky way to live. And I wish like, and, and really the whole thing of it, man, we kind of talked about it a little bit, but to get deeper on it is everybody wants to be surrounded in a community that is a like that are like-minded and the like-mindedness is what bonds us together and makes, you know, racetrack relationships so good because you have one common goal. Mm -hmm. Right. And everybody wants that. And when you find it, it's so special and so unique, you know, there's, that's really what a church is supposed to be. Yeah. Right. But a lot of times, you know, they miss it, but that's that what you feel is what we were made to be a part of. And unfortunately, a lot of people miss it, man. They don't get into a community like that. Whatever, whatever the community is, yeah. right? You, we all need it. No, it is very much that way. And it, and it also seems like, you know, within the community, uh, like-minded individuals tend to grad, gravitate towards each other. Yeah. Um, and, and create that family, which is really neat. Yeah. And to make people, you know, some people, you know, uh, may have some bad habits or good habits and, and they all kind of help, you know, push each other forward because we're, we're all so competitive. Yeah. And so I've seen a lot of people uh, come in and so I'm, I'm in the industry long enough where I see someone that maybe has, has a checkered background that maybe, uh, I don't want to say a bad person or not, not a bad person, but like have bad. Made some questionable decisions. Yeah. May, yeah. Questionable decisions. There we go. Make some questionable decisions and that come into there and, and kind of get lined out. Yeah, no, I um, you see that time and time again. Yeah, man. like no, you can't really be an alcoholic and have this hobby at the same time. It doesn't work. So you need it's, to this stop is already doing that. expensive yeah. enough. Yeah, we, yeah. Can. <laughs> we can't afford that. So we're gonna have to, you know, uh no, a funny example. But yeah, I've seen that a lot. And like and that's another thing, like lifting each other up, pushing each other forward um in all areas of life. I mean, yeah. And uh it yeah. Well, I had a friend that um we were you know, PR, we just came from PRI and um we were talking and and he's like man i you know i i hope i didn't embarrass you and and i'm like what do you mean he's like well I, you know i was out last night whatever and and the thing is like i i appreciated that he said that but i don't care like to your point like racing is such a good motivator to make people's lives different right and like you know and if i look at like who jesus was um he loved people exactly where they were at. Right. He, and, and like the, his love is what promoted change. And like what happens in drag racing is your love for the sport promotes change. And it's a beautiful thing to watch. Right. Like it, and, and I want to be involved with people that want to change. Right. Like it's an awesome thing. Like, but to your, to your thing, it's like, I don't really care if someone has a checkered background. Like, that's not my place, right? But what we're here to do is to dump gasoline on the future. Absolutely. You know, like, let's go. Like, yeah, whatever happened back there, but we're moving forward, man. Like, not dump I, it, but fuel it. Yeah. Let's get, <laughs> let's, yeah, let's yeah. get it. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, no, absolutely. And, and I've seen it, and it's helped me change in certain areas. It's helped me grow. And the people around us, like it's helped grow our family grow together. It was a little hard at first, and yeah, um, and yeah, no, it's, it's really awesome. Well, for my like, I get what you're saying. Like, it is hard at first because like you kind of have this addiction that's like really not healthy, right? Um, <laughs> I don't know if it's healthy now. Yeah, either, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably <laughs> feel good <not>. about it. <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, got this time slip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like for my wife and like <laughs> my kids, like like. Um, you know, my wife fell in love with the people, right? Like that's why my wife left her job and she works here every day and she does all these things because you do, you get to meet all these really awesome people and you have family all over the country and really all over the world, right? Like it's, mm -hmm. it's just a unique place to be. So. Yeah. It's definitely something that was, uh, wasn't sought out, uh, but it happened. Yeah. We, you thought you were just here to win. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> it turned out to be so much more. Yeah, absolutely. That's and cool. So. What, um, so in closing thoughts, you got anything that you would like to say, anything that you want to leave us with? Oh, I don't know. I guess maybe for those that are, um, you know, say they're building race cars or they have a race car, they're not sure where to go. Um, 
just I mean, just get out, get out there and do it. Whether you're helping a friend, whether you're like, don't, don't try to be perfect. Don't try to be the best. Don't try to win. Uh, well, not try to, don't try to win. Uh, but like, just get out there, get your feet wet. Um, take action. You That's know? a great word. Take action. Yeah. Take action. Um, you know, set goals, pursue your goals. Yeah. Consistently. Well- well, and to that, man, like one thing that we do when we're building a car um, is we make lists. And, you know, um, one of the guys the other day was like, man, this this car needs too much to even make a list right now. And I'm like, well, man, I disagree. Because like what lists do is they make you feel accomplished. It's a psychological thing, right? Like of this is how what I need to do. And every time I check something off this list, I might add more to the list. But at least yeah. I have that feeling of, man, I won. We Here we call it winning the day. Yeah. Right? Like if we can win in some fashion every day, it makes it a great day. And it might be a small win. You know, it yeah. might be whatever. It's it. We, you got to win the day. Yeah, absolutely. And, and even like with builds too, it's like I get calls a lot like, hey, well, what, I want to build a race car. It's like, what's your goal? Like, uh, I don't know. It's like, where do you, so like what I like to tell people is like, we need to set this goal and then we need to work backwards from there. Exactly. And, and create measurable distances between each accomplishment. Like as you're, as you know that you got there, all right, we got here. Now what's the next step? What's the next step? What's the next step? <clears throat> and just keep pushing forward and, and get started and don't, and, and what in all areas, I mean, like in anything. Well, really. and that that's kind of what I was picking at about no prep being in. And it's, you know, the awkward middle school It's yeah. like, with radial stuff, you have a clear goal of where you can build to. You know, they've yeah. had classes for years that it's not a moving target, right? Yeah. Um, it is, you know, you – and that's what I see a lot of people in no prep, like what you were kind of talking about. You know, they had to change their doors, do this, do that. What's well, because when they built the car, they didn't have any vision. They just like, oh, these fiberglass doors were cheap. This was cheap. Let's get weight off this thing. Let's do this. Let's do that, which was all great things. But – now that things are kind of tightening up in one area and opening up in the other, now you have a car that's stuck in the middle and you have to make a determination of, do we go this way or do we go that way? Like, yeah. you know, in no prep, if you're talking small tire, I don't think that, you know, that's a whole other thing. But the rule thing is you're always going to have to have a class that has really no limits, that can have any power plant, that can do whatever. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately for us, that's small tire. What people have to get away from is like they care so much about the name of the class. They're like, oh, it's called True Street. It's got to be a True Street car. Well, in radial, we have Ultra Street. Those aren't street cars. They're Ultra Street cars. This is a True Street car. doesn't yeah. really matter if it can drive down the – if it fits, it ships. And, yeah. you know, Cali Nate won that Daily Driver class. Well, it doesn't matter that the class was called Daily it's Driver. It's the rule set. Yeah, it's the rule set. If it fits, it ships. Yeah. So it we have to, you know – for us to grow up, we have to understand that, you know, and, and it's going to take a little bit. We're, we're going to need some more classes, yeah. and hopefully we can find some unity. You know, why did Wally Park start the NHRA? So that people would not street race. Yeah. That was his goal. So going, yeah. Let's we need to come Wally, back full circle. We need a Wally Park. <laughs> yeah. So. so, but yeah, setting setting a goal and having a clear, uh, I mean, just clear design of where you want to go. Of course it can change, but you know, not to make a pun, but, the, you know, the fastest Point from one point to another is A to B, yeah. <laughs> straight line. Yeah, and so you know, hey, I'm gonna build this, and then I'm gonna build this, I'm gonna build this, and uh, I'm gonna get this turbo. Um, you know, do your research, get the help that you have around you. The internet's a great resource. Um, figure out your goal, work backwards, and get out there. Yeah. Um, you know, stuff changes, everything changes. Yeah, you know, Tony so. Bischoff has a great quote on his on his shop wall when you go in. It's 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 something to the effect of like you're going to have to build this engine more than once. So build something that you can afford. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it, and well, that's, what's cool about. And I think that, and, and I get this a lot now, uh, racing for a little while. And, uh, I guess the people that find inspiration in my car, because it is, you've seen it. So, I mean, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, bro. <laughs> you know, it is a 5.3. People don't believe it's 5.3. It is a stock 5.3. Uh, Off-the-shelf, drop-in assembly, you know, heads you can buy. 
yeah, it, it nothing is special about it. Um, and I think it inspires people, or I know it does. They've told me uh, for them to push forward. Like, hey, I don't need a, you know, because they watch Street Outlaws, which, dude, now it's insane. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, you went out and raced with them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's out of reach. And so I think when people see my car, uh, it, uh, or from what I've heard, it, inspire, it inspires them to to build their car, to finish their car, because it, you don't have to be perfect. Um, you can build something, you can fit a class, you can go out and race and have fun. There's index races. There's, yeah. uh, you know, there's so many different, uh, avenues that you can get in. And so just got to broaden yeah. your horizon a bit. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, get out there and you don't, it doesn't have, you don't have to have a big block you know, nitro, you know, whatever it is. You don't want a nitrous car. I'll no. tell you that right now. <laughs> I do. I do have a nitrous car. You know, hey, yeah, you do. Yeah. It's a turbo assisted nitrous car. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah now, now that's interesting that we can do a whole podcast on that. <laughs> yeah. Cause we're allowed to have dual power adders and radio stuff. You're typically not, but so yeah, man, but, get out there, join the family. That's a great way to end it is join, like join the family and you can't, you can't come to dinner with the family if you don't have a car in tow or you're not willing to go with a buddy or, you Absolutely. know, and I think I would love to see more people team up, right? Like that's a, you know, like with Charlie, there's three of us that pay for Charlie. Like, man, that takes a lot of pressure off. We all have the same goal. Um, you know, it's just, it's about getting out there and racing and doing, yeah, doing it. So, yeah. but uh, yeah, I think that's good. You got anything else? No, I think that that's pretty much it. Uh, where can people find you? What, how um, to, you don't have a YouTube or anything, do you? I do. You do? Uh, I'm pretty sure my wife just changed it. We, we, we just started working together. I think it's Crack and Race Supply. Okay. Uh, on YouTube. Um, that's our supply store. We sell stuff. And we've been working on getting, you know, videos out, trying to get some informative stuff out there. Um, uh, 71 Kraken, I believe, is my Instagram. But yeah, Facebook is, is, is bigger for us right now. Yeah. Just, uh, you know, the, the Kraken, T-H-A, the Kraken, or Stephen Little, you know, just Little my name. The Kraken. You know, the I, Kraken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the Kraken is not available. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, I got you. you. Know. Copyright stuff. Uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah, on there. And I guess this is. Why'd you true. name the car the Kraken? Oh. <laughs> Uh, it's a long story. It's actually supposed to be a buddy of mine, his car's name. And then he, uh, he never finished the car. And, you know, I was like, you know what? I'm going to, this is, I'm trying to make it short as possible, but if you're not going to, uh, name your car, the crack and like I started building my car and I got pipes and hoses and stuff yeah. everywhere. You've seen it. So I'm like, I'm going to steal the name and, you know, cause I, and I love like pirate, you know, pirates of the Caribbean, like all the, you know, the mythological uh, traveling around. I don't know if it's a South thing or what. A lot of people don't know what a Kraken is. He didn't. Um, so it's a mythical beast. <laughs> yeah, it's a mythical beast. Yeah, it, it's obvious for me. I was like, wait, what? Like you didn't like? I'm pretty sure they even taught that in school. But okay. Um, so no, I just I kind of I just thought it was super cool and like that thing was just a rusty pile of bolts, you know, when I got it. And so it's just like, like it came from the ocean. It's just like you drug it out of the ocean, <laughs> drug, a, start, drug a junk, junkyard motor and threw it in it and went. If you, you know? don't start racing in a pirate suit, we can't be friends anymore. <laughs> we got something in the works, uh, you know. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I, don't know, I just thought it was a cool name and and. There's a longer version of that. Yeah, it's but, cool. No, the Kraken. Yeah, a Kraken yeah. is a mythological well, sea beast. Yeah. I mean, is, you, is it a squid? Is it an octopus? I don't know. We don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. It could be a, a Camaro. Yeah. <laughs> it could be a Camaro. <laughs> yeah. Coming from the depths to <laughs> yeah, yeah. consume you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah. That's cool. Well, man, we really appreciate you. you um, he stayed an extra day for PRI just to come hang out with us for today. and. Um, yeah, I'm sure you guys enjoyed this episode. Make sure you go to all of his different pages, even though he wasn't super informative uh, of where <laughs> those pages are. Facebook. Facebook is, is the best thing. Crackandracesupply.com. Uh, they're perfect. There, there we go. go. Now Crack we got it. Yeah. Ricky might even be able to put it on the bottom there. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that's our website. We sell parts. Cool. Well, man, we appreciate you. Thanks for coming on. As always, Thank like, you. share, subscribe. We'll see you later.